What's up guys, Shane here from Fugitec 3D Printing and today we're looking at the Sidewinder X1. We're gonna talk about what the big issues are with it. We're gonna solve some of those issues and we're gonna do a little bit of modification to it. So let's get started. Welcome back guys and happy new year. It is a new year, new me is what they say. But hey, it's a new year. I'm back to getting deep into content and we're talking about the Sidewinder X1 today. I have to talk about this printer and usually I try to get more prints on them, but this thing has not been working for the past two months. And I'll tell you why, because there are crap components on it. And I really hate to say that, but there are some junky components on this printer and it is just so, uh, it just kills me that people over and over and over recommend this printer you just can't do that in its current form. There need to be two big changes to it before I can recommend this printer to anybody. And let's talk about what those two issues and recommendations are. Issue number one is the idler arm here on the extruder. The idler arm is this very small arm here and this is what helps pinch your filament and pushes it into the hob gear that then the hob gear pulls the filament through the extruder and pushes it out the nozzle and you really need this the problem is is well, this is a replacement the problem is is that the current ones that come on them are total junk I had mine break I think it was about 200 hours in so you know six seven prints into actually using it it had broken on me a big thing with that is number one from the factory this thing comes torqued down a ton and the tension is here in the back where you actually have to twist this to loosen the tension you need to do that as soon as you get your printer I'll loosen that up all the way and maybe give it like one and a half or you know two turns max to give a little bit of tension on it and that's about it but the problem is that when you pull back on this and you're trying to make some space for your filament to actually go in there and you're pushing it like this it just snaps right in half so now the printer comes with a second great you know everyone says that's great but the problem is if it's a bad part to start and they have to include a spare because they know it's a bad part why isn't it being fixed off the bat i have little to no faith that this arm will last any more than six or seven prints and then they sent me another one which took about two months to get to me and this one i also have very little faith that it's going to last much longer now these are a different model than what's coming currently on it and this one is the same as this replacement they sent me so maybe it is better maybe new versions are coming with that this is apparent version 5 incarnation 5 of this printer and after five iterations of it there's still problems you can go to the artillery x1 group and literally almost every other or every third post is someone posting a picture of their broken idler arm and that needs to change immediately and i'm hoping that it did in these later versions maybe version six i don't know but that was had been identified for almost a year this printer's been out has been identified as a problem and it really needs to get fixed so now that that is done again i have a second one on there hopefully it'll work for a while and then i have the spare great the other big issue is these ribbon cables are junk because now, I guess the ribbon cable idea is, is pretty fancy. I like it, you know, because it keeps it all in line. It's easy to install them. The problem is these cables are friction fit, and that is not a good thing because all it takes is a little pull and they pop right out. Now there are ways to go around solving that, but the problem is from the beginning, from design, that is where there's a problem with this printer. From the design phase, if they would have done a little more thinking, a little more effort into the part, you could totally uh, get rid of that and just, or you can keep using those and use a little latching. Because in laptops, if you've ever opened up a laptop before, you take out the uh, take off the keyboard, there's a little latch you have to pick up, then you can slide out the ribbon cable. One, it's not until that latch is lifted up before you can pull the ribbon cable out. That's a big thing to do. So I do have another, I do have a replacement one from them. It's taken again, it's almost two months now and I still don't have it, but I mean, it's on its way. Uh, and so I went ahead onto uh, what I get this from eBay and I found this for, I believe it was like $20 or $10 maybe it was. And this is a replacement, there's a piece of tape on it. And this is just a replacement of the extruder board that's here attached to the back of the extruder. So we're gonna go through how to replace that and put in this new one and hopefully this new board works. 
one nice thing from this seller is he sent a silicon sock with it from eBay. So hey, thanks to you, I'll put a link down to their store in this product. If you guys need one, or if you want to replace yours, or if you need to replace it, or if you want to have a spare, it might be worthwhile picking one of these up. Now, in order to kind of eliminate what happened before, when we kind of zoom in there, I'm going to show you, where actually I have a pin that has been misaligned and it fried my previous cable. But this one, I just put in there, I haven't run it since then because I don't want to fry this other cable. This is a new cable that I put on there and I just need to replace that board. But you can see where a pin had actually shorted and when I pulled it out, that pin kind of came with it. That's not good. So let's talk about what can you do to eliminate that from happening on your printer. So you have one right now and you're like, oh, I don't want this to happen. There's two things that I personally recommend. The first one is fairly easy and I might do on some of these other points right here is get a little bit of hot glue. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna get a little bit of hot glue and we're gonna run a bead right along where the ribbon cable meets the connector. Just a little bead right there. And it's enough to keep this in place, but it's also just enough that you can get a pair of needle nose pliers and you'll be able to just kind of grab it and pull it right off if you need to, if something changes or you wanna not do that anymore. Another thing you can do, which what I'm gonna do here on the extruder is replace the body. I already have this opened up because I was taking a look at that earlier. And this is a body that actually has a clamp on the side of it. So here's the other part of it. So once we get this installed along here, you take this other little clamping piece. This just kind of slides right in there. And then your two screws go into here and this will kind of sandwich that ribbon cable so that it's not gonna move. You need to make sure that it's in all the way before you sandwich it, obviously. But this should, again should, I haven't installed this yet, haven't even tried it yet, but from what I've read and seen other people do, this works out. It also does have a very handy little filament guide because it kind of hides all of that. You still have access to your idler arm, but that's about it. But it also does have a space for you to feed your filament down into it and it should, again, should line up. We're gonna find out here real soon. If this ends up not working, I'm gonna do what I said before. I'm gonna run a bead of hot glue just along there. Now let's talk about a couple of the quick mods that I've already done to the printer. Firstly is up here on the spool holder. This spins super nice now. And all I did was is print out these two wheels you have to take off half of the bearings and then re-screw these on. And then all it does is sandwich, these, these rollers sandwich between these two. Now it's nice and wide. So it's got this nice little lip right here. And that is so that you put half of your spool on one side of it, the other on the other side, and it's not gonna wander. Or will a little bit, but it's gonna stay pretty much right where it's supposed to be. And you can see, this is a standard size spool. This one is from, um, this is not Ziltec. I forget who this one is. But either way, this is a standard size spool and there's still a ton of space. So if you have any of those short fat spools or skinny spools, it's gonna work out just perfectly right on this. You don't need to adjust the width or anything. It's just two prints and you're off to the races with that. I really like that one. I have found it that it works just fine with the way that the um, runout detection sensor right here is already mounted. People complain about where this is. Personally, running it this way hadn't had any problems. For those about 200 hours that I used it, I, I added this on fairly early on and it was working just fine. I also changed up the part cooling fan, which I didn't like the amount of air that was coming from that one and I found a great one on Thingiverse and it kind of makes it more like the MK3 where it kind of puts a little bit of an angle it kind of streamlines the airflow a little bit more, gives you a little bit more cooling around and it also goes closer to the nozzle as it kind of points more. This one is, this one is not bad, but it's a little wide in my opinion, but you can go ahead and use this little mod, point it on there, and it runs so much better in my opinion. Now we've got all that out of the way, let's go ahead and take this extruder thing apart, show you what, what went bad on it, and let's get the new one installed. All right, so go ahead and place the cover back on. Now in order to get this off, all you need to do is loosen up these two screws right here, and you can just pull this right off. Then you have your ribbon cable. You're just gonna firmly grab that and pull that straight out. Now, this one, a little bit of a mark, but in here, I'll show you where that pin had given me the issue. I'm gonna go ahead and pull out the extruder motor wire just from the board. You can leave it in the extruder itself, the extruder motor, that's not a problem. And then we've got two screws right here that we need to take out. And now we've got a bunch of connections here on the bottom that we're gonna need to disconnect. This is a little acrylic spacer that's gonna go between the board and the motor. Two, three. All right. So here is our board taken out. So right in here, you can see there's a little burn there. That pin is actually 
uh, loose and sticking out and that's what caused the problem that's where it shorted out and made an issue with my ribbon cable ribbon cable never came out but I guess it must have been loose and jiggled in there a little bit enough to cause that to loosen up I mean that loosened up whenever I pulled it out is whenever that had problems I had tried to kind of push it back in but the extruder had just stopped working at that point all right so now that we have our new board we're going to install everything into it so we're going to take our led out of this one plug it right in the exact same way there and then we're just going to plug these cables right back in to where they came from i'm using just a small flathead to kind of help assist me pushing these in because there's not a whole lot of cable down there to be able to do that cooling fan all right so that's all there now we're going to get our acrylic spacer Set that back in here, and we're gonna guide that because it has the holes in it for the screws. So we're just gonna guide that in with this top one here first. And reconnect our extruder cable. Now, that board has been replaced. It's nice and fresh. So for now, for me, what I'm gonna do from here is I'm gonna go ahead and we have the, again, the housing is still on there. We're gonna go ahead and push this cable back in nice and straight. Make sure it gets in there all the way. Now I'm gonna go get my hot glue gun. I'm gonna run a little bead along this so that we can get, make sure this is secure. Again, you could use this other housing, but you know what, I don't think I'm gonna do that. I think you actually have to use the other uh, your 3D printed extruder idler arm. But since I didn't print that, I thought I could just use this, but I don't think I'm gonna do that. I'm just gonna run a bead along here and on this one right back here. You can see that on the Z. I'm gonna go ahead and do that, and that way that'll keep this nice and secure. All right, so we've got our handy handy glue gun here. Again, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do one, and just two little beads just on that to kind of hold that in place. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. I'm gonna do one, and a second bead right there. And that should be enough to make sure those stay in place and it also won't cause any damage. All we have to do now is close this back up with our two screws here and here. And we can see if everything works. Now one of the other things I want to do with this machine is I want to be able to print abrasive filaments. But I want to be able to print them a little bit faster. Right now there's a, a brass 0.4 millimeter nozzle in there and that is fine, but it's a big machine. The biggest layer you can do is a 0.3 millimeter layer height. I want to do a little bit better than that. So I went ahead and picked up, I believe this is a 0.6 millimeter a hard nozzle from TH3D. I had to order a couple parts from him on his Black Friday sale. So I went ahead and also ordered a nozzle. This is a volcano sized nozzle, so it's really, really big and long. And that's what's gonna go up into that volcano block. I also was using a legitimate E3D uh, volcano heat sock, which was a little bit too big. I'm gonna go ahead and switch it out for the freebie that came with my board and do that. So, all right, so now what we're gonna do is we're heating it up right now. I'm gonna take that nozzle off. I'm gonna put this new one on, make sure it's nice and tight, and then we can start printing. I want you to get it out. It is super duper hot, so I'm touching it with your hands. This is a little handy wrench that I got from E3D that works out really well, but again, this even gets pretty hot, so you gotta be quick about it. I'm just gonna hand thread this in a little bit, again, being super careful. I have this heated up to 230 degrees centigrade. We'll get that most of the way in. We'll kind of come in with the wrench. Get it in there. Mostly tight, and we're gonna hold the block and give it one last good turn. Wah. All right, that's on. Then a silicone heat sock just goes on like so. What the silicone heat sock does is it keeps the heat inside the hot end, inside that nozzle and that heater block, and less from everywhere else around your print. I just realized that I might have my mic on, so I'm sorry for that. All right, that's it. So I'm gonna go ahead and get printing with this again, but that's kind of where this kind of ends at, as I still don't have enough prints. I mean, I have a bunch of things printed so far. I've done a vase. I've done a couple of my maker coins and different filaments. I've done a benchy boat and I did their, their latest, their little test cube right off the bat. I did that in the live stream. 
But that's about as far as I got because this thing started to have issues. A little bit of smoke from that uh, new silicon socket. So I need to do a lot more printing with this and I really want to make sure I get my, my time in with that larger nozzle. Again, I still do have the 0.4 which I will hold on to and if I want to switch back to this I can but I want this to be able to print a little bit bigger, a little bit fatter layers, things like that and I'll do another video on kind of my outcome of that and an overall review of this but as of right now when it comes to like a review, my current suggestion is not to buy this machine. It does print fantastically but there are problems for it out of the box. Yes, you can solve that with 20 bucks. You can buy a next spare extruder board. You can buy a couple spare of these idler the arms. You can buy a legitimate one for I think it's 20 euros from E3D themselves that this is a Titan, Titan clone. Or you can buy an aluminum one on AliExpress and you can buy an entire aluminum Titan as well, a clone Titan extruder from AliExpress for I think it's like 30 bucks and I think the idler arm is $9 I think made of aluminum, which a lot of people have done in the group. But buying a machine and knowing that literally within your first week of printing, it's going to break is a problem. This thing prints awesome. It has a great build plate. Quality is awesome. The quiet, I mean, this machine, I usually forget it's actually printing because it is so doggone quiet. It's great, but there's just those problems out of the box that really make it hard to say this is the best printer of 2019, which a lot of people have done. It is not. I'm sorry it's not. It is close very close but i think if artillery or whatever their new name is i think if they can put a little bit more r d into this this could be the absolute killer machine of 2020 but it just isn't there yet so i'm gonna get printing with this guys i hope you enjoyed the video i hope you come back and check out some more here in the new year and if you guys want to watch those new videos make sure you're a subscriber and hit that bell icon that way you get notification when i upload any new content if you want to help me out become a patron that is how i get my monthly income and you guys are awesome for supporting me it helps me buy mods for the printers buy buy printers buy filament all kinds of things patrons really do make this channel run otherwise you can help out there's some one-time donation links or use any of the abundant affiliate links down below again affiliate links for a bunch of different parts that i've used on this links to the models that i used as well and even if you guys just watched the video you're awesome thank you for tuning in happy new year and happy printing